Hello, Zero K fans. Welcome to this exhibition match stream, as regular on Saturdays. So we're gonna have a match today, a bit of an older one. This was actually a request from Flipstip, and I was going to get to it before the tournament, but I didn't want to do too many older matches before last week's tournament. However, now that that's over, I figure I might as well do it. So this is going to be Spudupluk and Flipstep on Desert Cliffs. This is actually the second match, or one of the other matches. They played another match, which I've casted already. I casted that, I think, a week or two ago. That the last Wednesday or the previous Saturday. Anyway, this is the other match, which was also requested, and which looked actually more interesting, but I wanted to do it afterwards, because it was also a bit longer. Anyway, without further ado, let's talk about the map as usual. So Desert Cliffs, as I mentioned in that cast, it's a kind of small map, as is fairly obvious. Everyone starts out in a relatively open area. I mean, you can start out anywhere along the north for the teal player and south for the red player, but most players will start in the center near the three metal extractors. However, these are fairly distant from each other. Now, the support commander is fine for dealing with this, which is why both players have gone for it, because it has a larger build range, so it can deal with that, no problem. Afterwards, most players will typically expand... Well, it looks like Flipstep's going to expand down to the southwest. Spider Pluck looks like they're probably going to either split between the two or expand over to the northwest. Taking the center is fairly important. Taking the center hill is important, but doesn't really decide the game. It's useful, though. You want to take it, but you can go around it, and it's not... I find in practice it's not as easy to... Uh, it's not, say, Cooper Hill, for example. Cooper Hill is a map where you have to have the hill. Desert Cliffs, not so much. Desert Cliffs, you can get away with not having the hill to an extent. You do want to take the rest of the map, but the hill isn't isn't absolutely crucial. But it's good. You want to take it. So they'll probably see both players try to fight for the hill while fighting around the hill as well, and also sneaking around trying to take the expansions. Typical play, that's normal. Nothing map specific. So with that said, let's get to the game. Flipstep's gone for heavy tanks, which is a bit of an interesting strategy, while Spadapluk has gone for pretty much the opposite, going for Spider Factory, because I mean, in this map, all of these ramps are bot pathable, and they're actually all vehicle pathable too, but the flat area is where the vehicles shine. Starting out with a Kodachi, which is perfectly typical. Get that Raider out. Got a nice Raider into... Okay, a couple Kodachis into a Welder, so flips up being very aggressive here. And Spadapluk, on the other hand, starting out... Like, the Spider Factory is an interesting choice. They will have all of these cliffs available to them that the vehicles won't have. So I'm curious to see if they'll go for a Crab, like if they go for a Crab right here. These fleas will spot out that a Crab right here would do a very good job. The other options, of course, are just general ambushing. This map does support ambushing. This is actually where the hill will be very useful. Like, for bots and vehicles, the hill is sort of useful, but because the ramps are so small, you have to be really careful. If you go down the hill, you end up hitting these ramps, and then it becomes a choke point. Spiders, on the other hand, they can just take the cliffs. So Svadapluk is going to really want this hill. They're going to want all the high ground, actually. I'm a bit surprised they started in the center for what they started with, but yeah, they want the economy as well. But yes, they will probably want this high ground, because that way they'll have a much easier time harassing, because they have a very direct path. If Flipstep takes the hill, then Spiderbuck has to be much more careful about how they go around. They can't... they lose that really handy cliff for ambushing. And also artillery placement. But at this point, Flipstep is going for somewhat typical defense. I mean, a bit of raiding, but fleas are basically just scouts. They're not raiders at all. Flipstep, however, is not raiding too much. Spiderbuck has been... Sorry, Spiderbuck was talking about with the fleas. Spiderbuck has been... Scouting out, they know what's going on. Flipstep, they sort of know what's going on. Like, where's Flipstep? Yeah, they know more, they know what the factory is, they know a few other things like that. A bit of where the economy is, but not all that much. And right now, Spadapluk is way ahead in energy. Flipstep's falling behind in energy production, actually. They are desperately building up solar collectors to deal with this. And nice shot with the Venom, so the Venom will be able to lock down the Kodachi. Now, this is where the support Kodachi really comes in handy. The second Kodachi is basically the only reason why this fight is not the Venom's slow kill. However, Flipstep got lucky there. Spudapluk didn't actually move that Venom out of the way, didn't anticipate a second Kodachi, which you wouldn't, really. Most of the time, players only go for one. Usually, Heavy Tank Factory, they go for one Kodachi, and then they switch straight to Panthers. But no, this time we see Kodachi and Banisher as basically the main force from Flipstep. This is really surprising, actually. Spadapluk, however, going with the typical spider spider composition. Venom and Redback. And I don't know that I agree with this. I mean, the Venom is doing okay. But it's still kind of tricky given the speed. I mean, if they ambush around the hill, then they're fine. But if Spadapluk loses that main hill, because they are they're projecting some soft control over the hill, and Flipstep as well. Flipstep basically has the south half of that hill. The Spider Pluck cannot lose that hill, or else they'll lose the game. 
but Svadopluk, I'm a bit surprised they haven't gone for Hermits to tank this fire out. Like, use the Hermits to take the shot, and then everything else just kills it. Anything else would be kind of risky. I could see Recluses being useful, but I think Hermits would work best given the Banishers coming in. Not that Flipstip knows this, but still, I think Flip, I think that it would work best. It looks like Flipstip... Sorry. Not that Svadopluk would know this. It looks like... I wish I could reorder this. It looks like Svadopluk is going to... Probably, okay, they got the center. They have the center. They're good for that. Not going to take out the commander, though. This is actually suicide. They need to retreat. This is not going to work. Especially since they're attacking the Kodachis. But yeah, they're that's not going to work. If they had continued attacking the commander directly, that actually would have worked. I would have had to eat my words, but it didn't. I mean, they would have had time. It would have still been suicide, but it would have been a commander kill. 15, or plus 15 metal. That would have been a big deal. Oh, that was a bug? Interesting. I guess must have been a, I don't know, did they not hit target? I mean, that's what manual target is for, is that... I don't know if that was a bug, the Kodachis were dealing all the damage. Just that one situation, it was a bad idea. That's how 0k works. The game, the units in the game are reasonably intelligent, but they aren't perfect. Which is why you still need a human player. <laughs> anyway, I'm still surprised that Spadapluck is going for this. It looked like they were building a storage to try to save up resources that... Once they figured out what Flipstep was up to, once they figured out Flipstep's composition, they could just power out a counter composition. However, they're not even getting that much metal. They have about 200 or so in stock. They are they're building continuously, so they're not really using it all that much. They don't have a caretaker or any constructors here, though. Not sure if they're going to get that or if they're going to go for a second factory. I'm not sure that they're sure either. I think they're still trying to figure out what's best to do. They'll need more recluses if they want to be able to deal with this. Like the recluses, it's one thing they're inaccurate. You gotta get, you gotta get a lot of them. You really need to have great numbers of them. But at this point, Spadapluk has the hill. At the same time, Flipstep has basically their entire half of the map, or at least a quarter of the map. This this one section, this one hill, they haven't taken it yet. Well, Spadapluk, on the other hand, has not taken anything in back, anything that they can, well, in theory, easily defend. But yeah, they're much more focused on the center. The focus is that center hill. Because, like I said, they need it. That's their direct path. That's their ambush path. That's their artillery path for recluses and crabs. And at this point, Flipstep has a lot of pressure applied to them. They can't really attack easily. Like, their commander can't really move forward without getting hit. Their other units can sort of move forward, but then they have Venoms to contend with. And there are no Redbacks or Hermits to deal with this, so I'm a bit surprised. But yeah, the Venoms on their own are now, like, three Venoms is enough damage to deal with a Kodachi. Like, to kill a Kodachi. And then with the recluses on top of here too, like there's a lot of pressure on this. Flipstep does, however, have basically the entire north. Okay, the northeast is pretty much unlocked. The south, or locked down, I should say. The northwest, however, is quite open. Flipstep could go up this hill and go down into Spadapluk's base and hit it from behind. There's, there's one lotus. Well, two lotuses. Heavy tanks don't have to worry about that. It's a little tricky because that requires going up the ramp, and that's a slow process. It's not impossible. Vehicles can go up these ramps, like. As you can see, red just means slow. Purple means inaccessible. So vehicles can definitely go up the ramps. That's not a problem at all. I don't know if Flipstep's going to go for it, though. But yeah, trying to take the center at this point, probably not the best idea. The rear of the base is essentially undefended. And Spadapluk is almost... They would be accessing it for him for the storage right now. Flipstep, on the other hand, they are not going for storage. They are actually very nearly accessing. They do have the energy to deal with this, and now they have the caretaker, so they... We'll be able to start building up. Laurie pointing out in the spectator chat during the game that it could have been a pillager. And yes, it could have been a pillager. I still think that flanking at this point would probably be a better option. Like cut off the production and then attack. It would probably prompt a counterattack, but I think that flips to... Let's see, what do they have here? The commander, they have... Stingers. Yeah, I think they'd probably be able to survive a counterattack at this point. What's it? Like these... I don't know, four Venoms and two Redbacks? They'd probably survive a counterattack. Far better than if they just go forward and just attack without thinking. I don't know. Flipstep is getting caught in... Okay, not quite caught in lane thinking. I was about to say, they're getting completely caught in lane thinking. And no, they're actually going around the northwest and going around the northeast as well. They are going for a full-on flank. So they they were thinking what I was thinking, that they should go around the back and attack that way. Unfortunately, not even going for a metal extractor. That's... Bit of a waste. But yeah, they will need a bit more firepower. However, that just ruined the element of surprise. And this is the counterattack I was talking about, so actually we'll see if they'd survive. Hmm. 
Okay, maybe I was wrong. Maybe Flipstep did need more defenses at home. They are, however, going for the Pillager, so... I'm pretty sure... That chat was Spectator only, right? I'm not sure that was Spectator only. I think Lowry actually... Oh, no, that's, that's a label. Labels are... They are marked by team, or spec only. I mean, the Pillager is not a terrible idea, but I still think... I still think that if they had gone for a bit more power with the Kodachi attack, or not just Kodachi's, like, Panthers or Banishers or something going around the back, and using that to deal with everything, assuming there was going to be defense, like, assume there's going to be defense, there always is. So bring enough to deal with that defense, and then that would work. But sadly, they did not. Rather unfortunate for them. I don't want to finish this Geoplan too, but yeah, they don't really need it. Flipstep is okay for their energy right now. Yes, yeah, Fadipluk continue to attack, taking the Northwest out. The Kodachi coming in to its death, most likely, as the Venom will stun it out, and yep, there we go. The Kodachi dies, taking a Venom down with it, but even then, it's like one more Venom is not going to be too hard to replace. And then with the Reapers coming in, like, Flipstep is taking a lot of pressure. They basically had that one shot to go around and flank, and they kind of blew it. They do have this Northwest taken, but even then, a couple of Rectuses will take it out. Not that big of a deal. And the Reaper as well, that's... Ooh, these units should not clump up. This this is a good time for Flipstep. These units are clumping up. Flipstep can take that out. Spadaplex still has another Kodachi. This Kodachi actually could go in. It could deal some damage. Probably not going to. Flipstep is far more focused on the front lines. I think. Are they, what are they focused on right now? I can't tell. I guess Flipster didn't have the widget to actually let me know where their camera is. Must have turned that off. That's on by default, but I guess they turned it off for some reason? I don't know. Oh, never mind. That was weird. Anyway, the point is, Flipstep is probably not paying attention to this Kodachi. They aren't flanking, and Spadablook, like I said, this is not hard to get rid of. Especially with Hermits in tow. Yeah, look at that. One flea goes down to a Banisher. Like, Banishers, they're actually pretty good against fleas, though. The Banishers are the right option, but the, ra the Reapers are going to be the problem. So at this point, Spadapluk is just ripping everything apart. Now, hopefully for their sake, they do take the Northwest and take all this Reclaim. That's a lot of Reclaim. That's basically free. They'll want to take that. They'll need to take that, really. Especially with the Commander helping out. Yeah, they need that. They are they have a lot in storage, mind. But still, they're going to need that. They do have... Okay, they do have Reclaim. They do have a, a Weaver taking that out. Which is exactly what they want. That Pillager is still being a problem. Well, in as much as it hits, but it's still being more or less a problem. And the center is now going to fall, and Svatopluk, like I said, they kind of needed that center, and they let it fall. Now, at this point, they do have a good flanking opportunity. They could go up here, and then go around the side, take out the Geoplan, take out the Metal Extractor, or just take out the Factory directly. They have enough firepower to do that before the Reaper and Banisher get back. Once again, another counterattack problem. I'm not sure if Svatopluk would survive that. They do have a crab coming up, so that'd be promising. But most of their forces would be out of position if they went for that. However, that pillager... Ooh, that pillager is nicely protected. The, those Panthers and Kodachi... The Kodachi will be the best bet here. Panthers will still be of some use, but one more Panther explosion, and that's going to be stunned out. Everything's stunned out. The Panthers basically killing themselves on top of the Venom stun. That works out very well for Spiders. And there comes the Kodachi. Surprisingly, not going for the Metal Extractor, which was essentially a free Metal Extractor. Yeah, Flipstip is not paying the most attention to all their units. Now, Svatopluk has taken the north side. Svatopluk is basically taking their economy. Now they're going around flanking exactly the way I expected they would. This is what I mean by a chronal cheating. When I say that, it's, yeah, I say something, and then it's like, a month in the past when this game happened, the players went, you know what, we'll do that. Somehow they heard me. That, or I just know how the, game's supposed to, how the game will typically go. That, or just good commentary, I guess. But yeah. Flipstep is taking a lot... Just too much damage. It's way too much damage. I mean, Spadaplik, the one downside is Spadaplik does not have a whole lot of power. Whereas Flipstep does, or at least did. I mean, they have the Geoplant. If the Geoplant falls, Flipstep is going to have a much harder time. Because tanks basically needs plus 30 in order to be viable. Like, they need... A, you basically are relying on static defense and panthers until you get about plus 30, and then you start pumping out Reapers. And once you start pumping out Reapers, then it's basically endgame. And there's already two Reapers and a couple Banishers as well. So once that once it gets to that point, it's basically game. Unless your opponent has a Strider or a Strider class unit themselves. But 
until you get to that point, it's a little tricky. They're a bit all or nothing that way. However, we are getting very near the all part of that all or nothing, and this Geoplant... Well, actually, the Hermit's in a pretty good spot to deal with it, but yeah, the Geoplant does not quite have the same firepower at it. Svadopluk needs to keep going. Oh, wait, well, they can't. They're kind of stuck. That Hermit should probably retreat then. But no, Spider-Book is moving forward, trying to abuse line of sight, and that's, well, not surprisingly, not going to work. However, Spider-Book doesn't really care. Though Flipstep is taking the center, Crab's coming in. This is where the center would have been very useful for Spider-Book, because they could have basically just set up in the center. And this Cloakabout Factory would be nothing. They would have had a Crab right here. And the Cloakabout Factory would not exist. But instead, the Crab is having to try to take the hill, rather than using the hill. So if anything's going to be Spadaplux undoing, it's having lost that hill. And essentially allowing Flipstip to get to the point where, well, they're at the all stage. Like, Flipstip is just pumping out Reapers now. They have, well, two Reapers, one of which is in a hole. I mean, three Reapers, one is a hole, so two Reapers effectively. But still, two Reapers, two Banishers, two Panthers against a mid-game Spider army. The Crabs will be a problem, but there's not much else right now that's there. A huge amount of their army was just killed in the southwest. Flipstep is really no worse for the wear, having kept their Geothermal plant alive, because remember, Geo is 25. That's a huge... that would have been a huge blow if it had gone up. And it didn't. It's still very much alive. And the Clickbot Factory is being cancelled. Or at least being stopped for now. I suppose, given the fact that against crabs you do want to have heavy tanks? Kinda makes sense. Like, the Banishers will work well, the Reapers will work really well. But Spadopluk has taken their territory. Flipstep has lost a fair amount of territory. We're trying to retake the north, the southwest. They should be fine. The crab's coming in. Like, they can't easily take the center. They, I'm sure they want to. They so very much want to take that center. It's just hard to do. Because they're fighting uphill, which I, with weapons I believe are affected by gravity. Hmm, let's see. Yeah, the weapons are... You can, see, you can tell from the top. The weapons are affected by gravity. Sorry if they cause anyone motion sickness. But yeah, so the crab coming in here, and the fleas coming in as well, that's... The fleas are kind of nice as bait, but the crab has so much health, why does it matter? Like, just... shoot. Oh, nice. So it looks like... Ah, uh, heavy... Uh, I see. Heavy particle beam. Is that a degen weapon? No, it's just a long-range weapon. Yeah, that's not going to work out too well. I've never seen the weapon before, actually. Heavy particle beam. It's a new one. Yes, yeah, so this crab, it's still going to get killed out by attrition. There's nothing else coming but crabs, and I think this is going to be Spadaplik's undoing. They have no army variety, they have no way of getting around Reapers. The crabs are basically killed by Reapers. And the Cloakabot Factory is being completed, and at this point, Flipstep is basically going to take the game. And the biggest mistake was the fact that Spadaplik left that center open. They left the center open, they also... They allowed the units to die over here. They probably should have just dove in for the Geoplant. I'm just surprised they didn't take their own Geoplant now that I think about it. That's a pretty reasonable thing to take. And Gauss... No, well, Gauss turret is in a good position. I'll give it that. But yeah, now trying to retake that hill, it's almost impossible. Unless they were to go for an air switch or just a general factory switch. But yeah, the Cloakabot's coming in here. Sai is coming in to probably finish the job. Sai and Glaives. So if any small army comes in, Glaives will take care of them. If any large army comes in, the Heavy Tanks will take care of them. And the Crab doing its darndest. But unfortunately, due to radar incorrectness, it is not going to hit that Stinger anytime soon. The Stinger, however, can't hit it either due to line of sight. But yeah, the Fleas managed to get up the hill. If the Fleas got up the hill, it'd be okay. Good luck with that, though, because even killing the Pillagers is going to be a bit of a problem. But the Pillager will go down. But that's not a big concern. I mean, that's... Okay, when you take the hill, maybe. But that's not going to happen anytime soon. Like, Spadaplug is not going to take this hill. Not without radar. Or not... Sorry, not radar. Not without... A spotter. Not without having the flea up here. Finally manages to hit. I guess it managed to get Linus... Oh, I see. Closer radar from... Let's just... Let's just look at Spadaplug's point of view. Yeah, it looks like Spadaplug managed to get line of sight. So that... Even with the... Even with line of sight? What? Even with line of sight, the crab is shooting out from the wrong direction. Digging a deeper and deeper hole into the ground, just with its shells. I mean, I guess if you wanted to dig a hole, you succeeded. 
And now, finally, the center's gonna be taken, but it doesn't matter. Flipstep has basically gotten what they need. They bought a bunch of time. They got a fairly large army as a result. Though, that Cloggy Switch... The size will be able to deal with some damage and scout out, but I don't know if Flipstep's gonna be able to make that work. I think mostly it's gonna be the, the heavy tanks that are gonna make that work. And a couple of Reapers are making out in the corner when they should be fighting. While the Scythe's actually doing their job, we'll be able to come around, but... See, that Crab would be a nice target. Although the Scythe's don't deal enough damage. They deal, yeah, 200 damage a shot. Not enough to kill the Crab before it sits down. Maybe enough to kill a Factory. If they get rid of the Lotus, I think the Line of Sight will work out in their favor. They get rid of this Lotus right here. Yeah, so everything's free except for the Fleas! Which are a massive problem, they're gonna probably stop this Yeah, they're gonna stop this raid. Are, are they? Nope, but two brand new Lotuses will. Yeah, that... That's probably not gonna work at this stage. And actually, now the hill's being retaken by Spadapluk. Spadapluk's now gonna have the advantage. They have a vantage point to take out the Cloaky Butt Factory. They have a vantage point to take out the Commander. This is why Spadapluk needed the hill, and they finally have it back. Although they don't have the Glaive's gone rid of, but yeah, they finally have the hill back. The Glaive shouldn't be a big problem. Like, little pea shooters there are not going to be a problem with repair in the back. So the hill has finally gone back to Svartopluk. I'm sure they're quite happy about that. Unfortunately, at the same time, they are finally getting successfully flanked. This is what Flipstep should have done about 10 minutes ago. When they threw the Kodachis out there, that should have been Reaper and Pillager. Or just Reaper in general. Or Reaper and Banisher, I should say. But yeah, now they have the forces necessary to flank around and destroy the base. Assuming they actually went and used those forces. Flipstep doesn't seem to have the best multitasking. Unless I'm missing something, it's like they're focusing on this one front line. Like, both players have been focusing probably a bit too much on the hill, and not enough on flanks, or enough on, if they, especially if they have flanks set up, like, on actually finishing the flanks. Because the that Reaper and Banisher have been taking free hits for the last minute. And they were just sitting there. And now Spider-Block should be able to finish this off, this one sharpshooter being the only problem. But even with a sharpshooter, it's going to take a few shots to get rid of even one crab. This crab will go down in one shot. Actually, this crab's going to go down, I think, very soon. Although the flea... Yeah, like, walking with a sharpshooter is a bad idea. Especially with the scouting fleas. That'll just stop it. This is... I, this is still anyone's game, I think. But I think... It's getting very swingy. Neither player really has a whole lot solid in the back. Like, if they get... If this goes through and Flipstep loses what's at the front lines, they're done. But if Spotapluck loses this crab it's going to be hard for them to keep going. Like, Spudbuck has a weaker economy right now. But has a better position. Okay, actually, at this point, the Clickabot Factory is totally dead, thanks to that... Oh, nope, never mind. No, Stardust does finish it off. Wow, that was close. I thought that Stardust would be dead, but nope, the Pillagers are not enough. And constant swarms of fleas coming in with the Strider Hub on top of that, so Spudbuck can finish the job. But yeah, with that hill, now it's... Now it's going to be more difficult. Crab still has a lot of potential, though, especially with the swarms of fleas coming in and just scouting everything. Not as much killing everything. They're not going to kill much, but they're going to scout everything and know exactly what's going on. And maybe kill a few things. Because why not? When you have two dozen fleas... How many, how many fleas are here? Oh, four now, but it was like two dozen before. It's just they're weak. That's the problem. They're very weak. And that's also all they have. They have that and welders and a crab. So they're relying on repair to keep this crab alive. That's good. But they're not focusing on the corners. They're not focusing on well, either side, really. They're focusing on the northwest somewhat. Spadapluk has that fairly well protected. Focusing on the Dante, but not haven't retaken the northeast at all. Just have not bothered to retake it. Focus so much in the center. But also haven't bothered to take I mean taken some of the reclaim, but not all the reclaim, but still. That's free resources. Or right here. Just build a metal extractor right here. Why not? Yeah, sure, flip to... I mean, sorry, sure, reclaim is better. But it doesn't mean that static economy isn't good. Okay, well, it looks like flip to is probably more on the ropes. I really can't tell. There isn't enough secure in either case. Like if either player makes one or two good decisions here, it's going to swing the game. Although, morphing level 5 commander is not what I'd call a good decision. We'll see, but yeah, I'm not too confident about that. Oh, yeah, the Goliaths 
tank buster cannon. I guess that's what that was, which you just barely saw with the blue bubbles. Is that tank buster cannon? But yeah, basically Flipstep is donating a bunch of resources to Spotterbook, and that's what's keeping Spotterbook kind of in this. Because Spotterbook right now doesn't have a whole lot to project force with. They have their Dante, they're getting a gunship switch. The Dante will help. But yeah, at this point. I don't know, I think if one player went more for lighter units and just flanked around and took out resources that they could with low cost and low risk, they'd probably take the game. But I still think Svadabluk has the game most likely. Given the way the players have been playing, Svadabluk basically has this game. Now that the Dante is bearing down, I think Flips is probably going to throw in the towel. The crowd has been handy, but it was all this repair. Like, good luck getting rid of it. Oh, never mind. The Banisher actually does, with the right timing in the combo. If the Banisher was still alive, at least. That would mean more damage to the Crab, but I think the Crab is dead. I don't think there's enough repair, even with this. Yeah, two more shots. There we go. The Crab's down. And now this is where Flipstep has a chance to bring it back. The Dante is still a problem, but if they, get, if they can get rid of the Dante, I think they could probably take the center at this point. There's not a whole lot of threat when it comes to a couple Reapers. Well, one Reaper. Actually, no, two Reapers. The second Reaper has been freed. Flipstep's commander freeing it from the Terraform prison, allowing it to go around the back on Spadapluk. Spadapluk never actually successfully killing that Reaper, just burying it into the ground. It has been released from its hole, and it now is wreaking havoc, destroying Spadapluk's energy economy, and might actually help take the game. A crow is coming in. A crow is almost done. I was about to say, this is a terrible idea, except I realized 20 seconds left. Not sure I agree with the idea, regardless. Spotted is relying a lot on very heavy units. Like, they're relying a lot on having a single very heavy unit win the game. I think they managed to get lucky with the Dante, though. Just because it looks like that single heavy unit will probably win the game. Well, she'll get rid of the energy transmission pylon. That's all the re the reclaim the overdrive gone. And then if it gets rid of the geo plant, that's all the energy gone. If it gets rid of the factory, that's basically game. But if it dies, then Flipstep has a way out. And it's not looking promising. 4,000 health, 3,000 health, 2,500 health, or 2,700 or so. 1,500, yeah, the Dante's dead. That's donation. That is donation material right there. So how much reclaim did that, I mean, that alone added 1,400. And now there's 3,000 reclaim right here. And a bunch of caretakers coming up. So Flipstep got their chance back. And with the crow, I mean, Flipstep's commander is coming in here as well. And I think if Flipstep loses their commander, they'll probably throw in the towel. But the commander and reaper... Still dealing a lot of damage, but both players went for late-game all-ins. And the Converse actually getting rid of a nice defensive wall here, but that Reaper is about to die. So despite the loss of that defensive wall of Solar Collectors, nothing really went down for Svadabluk. So Svadabluk and Flipstep are still both in positions where they can come back, but like neither player has really set up a solid position this entire game. They've been focusing on tricks, they've been focusing on single heavy units. None of them has been focusing on getting a solid, secure position where if they get knocked back a bit, they can fall back and recover. And now finally the Crow comes and gets rid of the Heavy Tank Factory and probably closes out the game. But that game was far too swinging than it had to be. Like, it was, there were so many opportunities for good harassment to get rid of stuff in the back, and there was just so much focus on heavy units without having just a larger, lighter army that could be more easily replaced, and could also have better divisions. So if one goes down, you have backup. But yeah, that was a really weird game. Really weird and really swingy game. The fact that it's Desert Cliffs doesn't help because it's a small map, but even then, it's probably not just that. It's probably just the fact that they were going for heavy units a lot. The crabs I can understand because of the hills, however, the reapers... Yeah, I mean, when you go to heavy units, you gotta be careful. 0k is not a direct progression. It's you, you build up, you build down. You build. You can build light units in the late game, and they'll still do well. Anyway, that was the first match. Quite a match it was. Going move on to the next match, and... No None of the other matches today are gonna be anywhere near as long as that one. So if that one felt too long, don't worry. The remaining matches will not be anywhere near as long. The next match will be Ikins and Snugglebase on Bandit Plains. Stay tuned for that, it'll be up in just a moment.